I don't, we don't approach dogs the way humans approach humans, okay? Like Bubba approaches dogs, we could learn a lot by the way he approaches dogs. He keeps his head down, he doesn't make eye contact with them, he doesn't bark at them or talk to them or anything like that. He just uses his nose, okay? And that's what we have to start learning is how we are going to be approaching dogs going forward, not only our own, but other dogs, and teaching other people that way. Our first instinct is to say, I love you, baby. And, and you're getting a dog all riled up. It's the exact opposite of what we want to do, okay? So when I approach this dog, and what's her name, or his name? Marilyn. Marilyn. Her, Female. I'm sorry, pretty yep. girl. So when I approached Marilyn, she was a very, very nervous dog. She still is. You can see her ears going forward, but she is building trust with me. The reason I'm holding her is uh, next to me is because I am allowing her to start trusting me. All right, and that was the first step in my process of meeting her is building trust. Most of the time, the problems that we have for dogs is they don't trust us. Now, trust is not trust isn't like you trust your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever to cheat on you. That's not the kind of trust we're talking about. Dogs don't trust us for a different reason. They don't trust that we can, they don't trust that we can protect them or ourselves. And they instinctively and inherently feel the need to do it. And when they're leashed, when they're crated, they're helpless and they don't know what to do. So this is what you see is all this paranoia and, and, and silly behavior. So we have to, you know, you can hire all the trainers you want and they'll teach you command after command after command and that's all well and good. But the first thing you have to do is you've got to build a relationship with your dog and it's based on trust and that's what I'm doing with your dog right now, okay? I am letting her drink me in. I have not talked to her, I haven't really looked at her. I did give her a little, little pet here a minute ago but um, at the end of the day, I'm simply building a relationship with her, okay? Based on trust. So why is it a relationship important? Well, you know, I, I, I always look at it this way. If you've got, uh, let's say you're growing up, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and your little brother or sister comes into your bedroom and says, Gabby, you need to clean your room, make your bed. Uh, really, it's a pigsty. You know, my sister comes into my room, I'm gonna say, you like, need to get the hell out of my room, like now, right? I'm, I'm not gonna listen to my sister. I'm not gonna listen to uh, my little brother. And, but if your parents came in and asked you the same thing, what you would see is you would do it. Doesn't mean you dislike your brother or sister. Doesn't mean you hate them or, no, it has nothing to do with that. The reality is that's the relationship you have with your parents. Well, see, dogs come from the same, the same background. There's trust, okay? They have relationships with their leaders, their mother that they simply don't have with us, okay? You had it at one time, most of the time, when you first get a dog. They give it to you, but you quickly, quickly give it up by succumbing to challenges and the inability to communicate with them because you're not dogs, which we're going to get into. So I just want to explain the first thing that I'm doing right now is building a relationship with, with this dog, okay? That's going to be the thing we're going to focus on the most today, okay? I've never really trained my dogs to sit, to come, to do anything. They're just great pets, and that's really what we're looking for here. We're not looking for a German police squat dog drug sniffing you know yeah, yeah you know military type dogs we're not looking for that we're looking for just dogs that we can take anywhere we don't need a leash they're good dogs they listen and they don't eat your house up and bite at people and dogs okay that's really the goal here and to do that's very simple and we're gonna all learn how to do it today and do it with these dogs that we're working with I know it works because I do it every single day with dogs much worse than this, okay? So the relationship is gonna be the most critical thing that we are going to work on today. There's four components to a relationship, okay? Component number one is trust, okay? You have to have trust, okay? You not only have to have, you not only have to teach your dog to trust you, before that you have to learn to trust your dog too. Okay, and that is a problem. Most of us don't trust our dogs. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be here, right? We don't trust our dogs. So what is it about trust that, that is critical? Well, when I met with this dog, okay, when I meet with any dog, I meet with them in a very calm, 
firm, assertive way. I do not start talking to them and communicating with them as I would a human. I don't do coochie coochie coo. I don't do any of that stuff right away. That comes later. What I do is I present an energy that is confident, okay, that is firm and calm. One of the biggest problems we have is most people do not know how to slow their racing mind down. So we end up triggering a dog. See, if your dog sees you as anxious, nervous, aggressive, overly empathetic, uh, <laughs> depressed, all these things, the dog sees you as being weak and can't trust you. The files in this dog's brain will not allow him to trust you. So when we start dealing with dogs, it's imperative that we do a self-diagnosis. This is exactly what I wanted from this girl. Okay, when I first saw her, she was a drunk. Now she's sobering up. You can't ever communicate and work with a drunk, okay? So now we've got her where she's, okay, maybe I'll listen. And this is why I like to hold the leash on a dog like this, to slow her mind down, okay? So trust is gonna be a lot about what's going on inside of you, okay? Being relaxed, being calm, but firm, okay? We're not gonna be, we're not gonna be overly, uh, empathetic for them and what happened in their past, we're going to be more like their mother is in the real world. Okay, so that's number one, trust. So every time that you meet with your dog, it should be the same kind of meeting. Whether you're going to the bathroom for a minute, you're going to the mailbox, well in this case, six minutes, um, if, you're, <laughs> if you're going to work for six hours or a vacation for six days, it doesn't matter. Every time you meet your dog for a while, okay, should be the same way, which is, don't look at them, don't touch them, don't, don't, don't acknowledge the excited behavior. I'm gonna get into why it's taboo to do that, okay? But right now, for trust, come in calm, firm, assertive. You don't need to be making eye contact with them. So pass them, go get yourself a glass of water, and when your dog is relaxed like this, this is when you give them affection on your terms. Don't have a dog charging you, saying, why do you love me, love me, love me, and then you give them affection. They're asking you for affection. We don't ever want to give that to them. So when you first meet them, it's gotta be about trust, respect, um, and we've got to basically put our needs aside. The second thing is, you can just let Bubba go if he wants. Uh, yeah. Um, the second thing we wanna do is we wanna work on our, we wanna work on, on, on respect, okay? So if a dog is, so if a dog is, um, if a dog is coming into your space uninvited, okay? The dog really isn't respecting you. If the dog is jumping on you, the dog isn't really respecting you. So if you, when your first dog first tried to jump on me, what I did was this, go on, okay? And I shoot him away. Why did I do that? Well, if they did that to their mother or their pack leader in their own natural environment, that, that pack leader would show teeth and probably growl at them maybe bite him, maybe chase him, put him down on his back and put his mouth over his neck until he surrendered to him. So when we allow dogs to just jump up on our lap, okay, and, and, and sit on our lap and just kind of go wherever we are, okay, wherever we are, um, what we're doing is we're real, they're really showing us that they're just really kind of not respecting us when they come into our space uninvited. That's a big difference, the difference between invite and invade. So when we invite them in, it's fine. So my point is, it's not, this isn't forever, these first two things that I'm talking about, because nobody wants a dog that you ignore, nobody wants a dog that you do this to. But until you build that relationship with your dog, these are the behaviors, uh, these are the behaviors that you want, you want your dog to do, is basically trust and respect you. And until you get that, you know, don't allow a dog to come into your space and bite you. Send them off, and then a minute later, when your dog is calm and relaxed, okay, what you're gonna say, what you're gonna do is, Invite them over once the dogs come. So, but my point is, you're gonna do it on your terms, not the dogs. The dog's not gonna be able to just jump on you on their terms, okay? We're going to teach the dog it doesn't work that way, all right? So, to get respect, you really have to be confident. Now, with that in mind, of course you guys don't think when I walk home, I ignore Bub and Fifi, of course not. I walk in and I do this, I love you. But I did when I first got them. I do with Harley. I just got a Harley a few weeks ago. He is full of piss and vinegar, this dog. And uh, I had to slow him down. And the way to slow him down is just to basically ignore him, walk by him. Don't allow him in your space. That's very, very temporary. But you do that until you've established that relationship with your dog, okay? 
The third component of building a relationship with trust, respect, is structure and discipline. We touched on that a little bit earlier. People think that, well, I'm just going to let them play ball out here and run around, and that's all the exercise he needs. Well, the reality is what you need to do, okay? The reality is what you need is, the reality is what you need is a structured walk. It's training. It's a way to communicate with your dog and build the trust and respect. So your structure and discipline is critical. If it's all about just playing ball, okay? If it's all about just playing ball, the dog is not going to learn anything, all right? It's the equivalent of, you know, if you had a kid and you, you just decided, you know, I'm going to just teach my dog, I'm just going to teach my dog to run or just hang out the house. We're going to play all the time. I'm not going to send them to school. I'm not going to make them hang out with these kids in the neighborhood. He doesn't play sports. I'm not going to teach them to lead, learn to read, write, math, none of that stuff. I'm just going to spend my whole day with them loving this kid up forever. We're going to watch TV, play board games, blah, blah, blah. I think you get the point. That kid's going to grow up to be a loser. I mean, he's going to be, he's going to be dependent on you. He's going to have no social skills. He doesn't know how to hang out with people. He doesn't have any idea how to be analytical. He can't get a job, okay? Doesn't play sports. He doesn't have that determination and that, 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 that sporting mentality of uh, confidence. So really what you've done is set the kid up to fail. Well, when we don't provide a dog with structure and discipline, okay, which is what I'm doing here. I'm making this dog sit here. Even though he wanted to go see Bubba, okay, I said, no, you got to sit here. So what I'm doing is I'm communicating with him, but this is structure. This is discipline. Well, one of the ways to fix 99% of all your dog's problems are to teach them how to walk in a structured manner where they follow you and they're able to pass other dogs. They're able to pass motorcycles. They're able to pass squirrels, chipmunks, all these things, okay? Does that make sense? So what we want to do is what we want to do is we have to start we have to start doing things of that nature to help them understand that they're not going to be making the decisions anymore. We are. And that's where the structure and discipline comes in, okay? So when you think dis discipline, you think all these things, don't think discipline is harsh. Not, nothing could be further from the truth. It's an athlete is discipline. A soldier standing at attention for hours is discipline. So those are discipline, okay? Those are disciplined dogs. It's the same thing. And then the final component of building your relationship is what you've all probably done very, very well I'm watching you do it, and that's what we love doing, and that's why we get a dog, is that joy, that love, that affection, the